is INN. This is a Meta Show breaking news update with Fountain Frank. Oh, that's good. Oh, fuck. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Meta Show. Breaking news update with Fountain Frank. I am Fountain Frank. Obviously, what am I here to do today? Well, I can tell you this right now. You can see me decked out in my full regalia with my winner's medals on because we are declaring today victory in the North. Yes, that means we won. We are not running away. We are not leaving anywhere. We are not doing anything right now except winning. That's what we do in the Imperium. We win. And that's what we have done. For the last six months, ladies and gentlemen, we have gone up north and fought valiantly against all of the bads that we could find. Sometimes fire would form and we would beat them. Sometimes they would form and they would come and bash our structures and we would laugh at them while they wasted their valiant time doing nothing important. But today, our work is finished. After six months, we have finally done what we set out to do, which was lose a keep star in ZMV. It hasn't happened yet, but it will. That was our only war goal, and we're going to make it happen probably in the next two weeks or so, maybe sooner than that, I don't know. But listen to me. I want to make it clear to all of you how important this victory was for the Imperium. This was probably the biggest thing to happen in EVE Online since that time Stitch and Gideon killed a Heron in Losek. It was at least half as important as that. Which is why I expect tomorrow everyone and the gaming media is going to be asking for interviews with me, Fountain Frank, so I can explain how much we have done, how great this victory was. So, for all of you wondering what we're doing, we are right now advancing back to 1DQ. We do not retreat in the Imperium. We advance in the other direction. We are heading back to 1DQ for a victory conga line of Titans because that's what happens when you win. And on the way out the door, less than five minutes ago, we just dumpstered a Pandemic Horde Union Fleet because we win. Thank you for bringing the fight to us while we complete our victory tour today. So I would like to say on behalf of everyone in the Imperium to fire, thank you. To Pandemic Horde, thank you. To Fraternity, what the hell are you doing here? You should be up north fighting Brave. Did you already quit? And to NC and PL, we wish you the best of luck in your continued retirement. I'm Fountain Frank, and now it's time for the Meta Show. When it comes to EVE Online, Every player wants to know the most effective tactic available. You want to know the meta. The meta controls everything. It determines what will and will not happen. Knowing the meta will alter your views, make you question your reality. It might even make you laugh. And now, you're part of it. You're watching The Meta Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the wrong screen. Welcome to the Meta Show. Today is Saturday, August the 27th, 2022. We've got a heck of a show for you today. Angry, you need to... Yeah, there you go. That helps. 
We have to get Angry Mustache back, like, centered in the screen because, you know, we couldn't see him at all. That was not good. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you all enjoyed that breaking news update from our dear friend Fountain Frank. He is, uh, he is definitely a power to be reckoned with in the Imperium. And as we are all watching as the Imperium moves back to catch, back to Fountain, back to Delve today, we're going to talk about something completely different. Because that's what we're going to do today. Anyway, today is our DSM 17 three-month update. Now, what does this mean? Well, those of you who have been following along at home, DSM 17 started in June. It is now the end of August. We are one week away from September, which is when CCP gets back from vacation that they started six months ago and are ready to actually do some work. So I want to introduce my colleagues who are all here from CSM 17 to hang out with me today. I have Kaz in here from Goons, who is our guest co-host this week. Hi, Kaz. You look very comfortable. Yeah, I can't find the mute button very easily. Hey, thanks, everybody. I am I am very cozy. I still keep the old ways. I was just typing in the chat. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, allegedly, my camera is 1080p. I'm not sure if that's that's working or not. On Twitch, it doesn't really look like it is, so I apologize uh, if I look like I'm from 2004. Uh, that's life. It's okay. It seems all right. We have Arcia Elkin from CSM 16 and 17 of Electus Matari, our favorite faction warfare CSM member. Hi. How are you, Hi. Arcia? Uh Glad to be here. Uh, thank you for having me on. I think you're making your Meta Show debut, which is exciting. So it's good to have yeah, you finally over here. Yeah, I've been on Push to Talk before, but never the Meta Show before. There you go. Well, now you've made it. Welcome. Angry Mustache. People in the chat are claiming that your mustache is not looking angry enough. What do you have to say to those people? Uh, Give me one second. Uh-oh, here we go. It's coming. Oh, no, actually, it oh, doesn't baby. work. Never mind. Ah, oh. It didn't work. Never mind. Yeah. But, uh, there you go. Yeah, so I'm just not moving my ships. Yeah, me either. So it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll get the next move up. It'll be okay. So, And I hope that you have replaced the batteries in your smoke detector. Although if you have not, that might make for a lot of fun hijinks that we haven't seen. Uh, in a while. Fun story about that. That was the one in the room behind me. The one in the room in front of me is out of battery this week. I have them hey. coming from Amazon. There you go. It's going to happen. And finally, and I would like to, to say a personal thank you, Mark Resurrectus, our wormhole CSM. Not only is he here, he has on pit vipers and he's drinking a big wave. If Mark was paying attention, if he wasn't doing a Cleveland Eve meet right now, he would be saying thank you for showing the brands. We're very pleased. Rampage yes. wise, you are rocking it out of the clock, out of the, out of the, out of the, Mark here thank today, you. Mark. Thank How you, you sir? sir. Thank you, sir. Hello, goons. I appreciate you having me in your audience today. Uh, for a longtime listener, first time caller. Gotta say, big wave, big fan. Happy to be here. Isn't that isn't that just the best beer that's ever existed? I mean, honestly, brisk is pretty fucking good, man. I'm telling you guys. Listen, mm. if you I, I'm not, if you guys watch Rampage Incorporated, you've already heard this. But if you're only a Meta Show fan, let me tell you this: Kona Big Wave. Greatest beer on the planet. Get yourself a couple cases. That's you so will drink smooth. them all. Then get a couple more. Yeah. You heard it here first. So welcome, Mark. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Kaz. It's good to see you. Long time no see. It's been a couple minutes. I don't turn my I don't I don't turn my camera. We'll talk about this maybe. I don't turn my camera on for the CSM meetings, mostly because my hair has been bad at the time that they occur during the mornings. Me too. So, but now I, I recently cut my hair because I decided I wanted to appear like a normal human and not just a gray square for the, the CSM thing. But we'll we'll get to that. I'm oh. skipping. I'm getting ahead of ourselves. Right. Well, look, I'm no just doubt. excited because I need a haircut and you've gotten one. So you are way ahead of me in terms of the uh, personal grooming stage right now. So thank you. All right. This show, generally speaking, is pretty open ended. We wanted to I wanted to get a chance to get not just the the Imperium CSMs, but a couple of the of the unaligned CSMs in here as well to talk about how things have been going. Now, Angry finally got his mustache angry enough. Here we go. Kaz, Kaz, Mark and Angry are three of the freshman class of CSM 17. Infants. RC and I are the old old hands. 
I'm the old, old man, which, I mean, makes sense given how much gray I have. And I did not have this much gray when I started on CSM 13, let me tell you. So that tells you That's a little bit about how much this process ages you. Absolutely. You're going to look forward to that, Kaz. You're going to be all gray by the uh, time you're done. I, you know, I started a little while ago. I, this is, again, help, you know, buzzing it every so often helps me keep that in check. Uh, once I grow it out too long, then it becomes really just very visible and I have to, to get rid of it again. But yeah, a lighter and lighter each time, unfortunately. There you go. Yeah, so we have started... 26, right? That right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're 26. You've just had a few sessions on the CSM. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm only 27 years old, really. No, I promise. No, it... I laugh because everybody laughs at me and teases me. I'm like, Brisk, you're like 60. I'm, I'm 45. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just 45. But, you know, this life takes a lot out of you when you're in the public eye all the time. And going out there and trying to get CCP not to destroy the game, which has not been very successful over the last couple of years, just saying. Try is the key word, no doubt. <laughs> try. I try. 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 It's hard. Well, so. yeah, yeah, you know, listen. Uh, here, uh, CCP, uh, they... Boy howdy. People, right? boy howdy boy howdy oh boy you know they they do they are you so gonna kick us off with a soapbox man i'll tell you what i'll tell you what because uh -oh. they Is it gonna uh, happen? oh man listen i here's what i keep telling people and this is god's honest truth folks i i just need you to know that i would never lie to you when i say that you know these 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 ccps these de these de these developers they they certainly do try you know, they do try what they're trying to do. I, I can't say, I, I, and I can't speak to their intentions, but they do try. Um, and it's, 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 I'll tell you the peek behind the curtain has been uh, horrifying. It's less wizard of Oz <laughs> and more like when you're a child and you pull back the curtain and it's your grandmother in the shower. Uh, and you know, it's, it scars you deeply and you'll never get over it. It's kind of where I'm at right now. How about you Kaz? I don't know if I'm scarred, but I mean, <clears throat> I don't, I, I tried to, I, I don't know. I, I always try and play good cop, right? So you're, I, it's hard for me to follow that because I don't want to be negative. I want to be positive about the many things I have learned, which I have positive feelings about, right? At the same time, uh, we all went into this knowing that we were sort of afraid about the state of the game that that hasn't fundamentally changed. We're still afraid, right? Mm -hmm. We still feel like we have a lot of work to do uh, to, to tell them some stuff and hopefully build on the things we do agree about and, and achieve some changes that are outstanding. Right. And that's a goal. I mean, that, obviously that's the Absolutely. goal. I think to, to Mark's point, And I think this is one of the questions that I wanted to ask all these guys. And, and I think Mark already knocked it out of the park here. <laughs> when you're running for the CSM, there's a lot of things that you assume are happening or as you assume are not happening, or you kind of expect, certain things to, to function a certain way. And it always takes about a couple of months, I think, or back in the days when we would have summits very early in the CSM, it would take about a day or two at the first summit to kind of, yeah. to kind of have this happen where you kind of realize, okay, this is, a, this is what it's like. And it's nothing like I thought it was going to be like. So what I wanted to ask each of you guys, and I'll even ask Garcia, cause uh, you know, she's been on for, uh, all CSM 17, and she was on for the last six months or CSM so of CSM 16.5. 16. There you go, 16 yeah. and a half. Yeah, um, I was the ascended loser of CSM 16. Well, I'm just glad you made it, because, hey, you know, we need people on the CSM that are going to show up and do things, and you do that, and that was that was good. And unfortunately, your predecessor uh, did not, and that's why he decided he was going to stop doing it. So that was good. Um, mm. I'll start with you, because we I, I want to get your take on this, because you came in in the middle. What is the most surprising thing that you learned about being on the CSM once you got here? And how did it compare to what you thought the job was before you got it? So the most surprising thing I think that I learned is that uh, maybe not every person making an update to the game has played the game enough to know the implications of some of the things they're updating. There, there are, are some developers that are fantastic and most people know who they are. And I am, uh, I try to be an optimist. I try, I, I think that everybody is well-meaning, but there are definitely, I can't, I can't 
obviously give specifics, but like, there's definitely things that's like, mm-hmm. you just like, you know, not everything coming into the game is as thought out as it should be Say for it. a game where everybody, like everybody playing the game tries to break everything that comes out. Like we are Eve players. We are like the bane of the internet, right? Like, um, mm. every, anything that has to come out, that comes out has to be it, well thought out. And that's not always the case. That was the, that was a very, very diplomatic way of saying it. I'm, I'm rather impressed. That was good. Uh, I'm Mark, I'm going to shoot it to you. What, what's, I mean, you obviously said, you know, what you said, but yeah, is there I mean, anything you, specifically I'll... that you thought was <laughs> different? Look, I thought my biggest hurdle, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you boys. I maybe drank the Kool-Aid a little bit from my, my wormholer, uh, uh brethren i thought going into this thing my biggest concern was going to be you guys all these these ding ding null seckers dragging me down uh Mm -hmm. what what i did not realize at the time was that it was in fact the glacial pace at which ccp iterates on the game that was going to be our primary opponent can't say i care much for that that sucks it's not the best is it nope sure isn't there bris it's not listen and here's the thing here's what bothers me so much is what oh yeah, here's what bothers me is that so many things look at talking. We talk about all kinds of stuff. We talk about stuff internally. We talk about stuff with the devs and sometimes devs come back and be like, you know what? It's a great idea. Let's, let's do it. Let's talk, let's, let's find a way we can make that happen. And then we're like, okay, cool, cool. Like when, when should we expect that? And they're like, oh man, it's going to be 2027 brother. And it's like, all right, cool. Well, I'll be playing a different game in 2027 brother. Like, what, what do you want us to say? Like, it, you know, they have a plan. They have a plan. They have a process. And I get it. And I respect that. At the same time, you need to move it the fuck along. Because PC is very bad right now. And it's not getting better. And we note that all the time. For example, right now, today, even with massive move ops happening, Saturday afternoon, 22,000 people well, almost 23,000 people playing Eve. That's kind of scary mm. given the fact that right now there were at least a thousand in it guys moving about half an hour ago. So, yeah, not the yeah. greatest. Angry. Tell me Fumbling your with the mute button. Yeah. Thing. Was it mute button was the hardest thing that uh, the biggest it, issue that you had? <laughs> no, it was. Um... I love that image so much. So, so there's an image that I believe it was Trevor Daihu or someone made back in like CSN six or something, and it is a stunningly true a decade later, uh, because we just had that moment last week. Basically, it shows how a fresh, uh, you know, Mr. Smith goes to Washington. The power of democracy come in. I'm gonna help make this game a better place, and then, and then you meet uh, the people who make the game. Uh, now. The the reason I say that is that for the first two months, I guess, of of our meetings with CCP, it was very it was meeting with devs that were on the ball. It was we were getting a lot of agreement on what issues exist uh, and and actually a lot of agreement on how how to fix it. And then uh, during this week's meeting on Thursday, uh, we just had our concerns dismissed uh, quite out of hand, and that was the facepalm moment that. Uh, that you finally you get to the bitter stage of being a CSM happened before the summit, but uh, uh, but uh, let's just say all the freshmen were pretty shocked at that. And I, obviously, we can't get into any details of the meeting because of the NDA. But let's just say there's always a meeting that happens. I think in the first four or five months of every CSM, where we sit down with. Uh, certain groups of people who are in charge of certain things and we have conversations with them and everybody walks away rather disgruntled. And unfortunately, I think we had our first one of those meetings last time. And it's just because that's just the nature of, of how this works sometimes. But I wasn't surprised. And I think I told the rest of these guys, they shouldn't be surprised because as, as sort dragon was fond of saying back in the day, the cynicism train that you, that you ride on, on the CSM Sometimes it's late pulling into that station, but it always arrives. 
Yeah. And uh, I think it hit there for a couple people. Kaz, what was Sir your take? Dragon said some other good stuff once upon a time. He said the player base is very good at blaming each other and letting CCP roll over them uh, when they should be looking at CCP as the bad guys. That, that was several years back now and sort of went unremarked because he retired shortly thereafter, right? Uh, I think the intru- the situation is interesting. I was I don't want to say I was shocked, right? I think that there is an element of that uh, and an element of CCP not trusting the player base because also I I think the player base has often been partisan and given them bad suggestions and just tried to take advantage. And they've seen that. I personally have witnessed that from previous CSMs, right? So I think the people at CCP who are the most concerned about that are, are, are gonna be the people that will have the longest uh, path to working with profitably. Uh, I appreciate some of their motivations. So like I said, I'm always a good, to trying to be the good cop uh, in these situations. Uh, so it, it's not, I also walked away disgruntled, right, uh, from the, what Angry is referring to, uh, right? But it's not like I'm without hope. Uh, and I also, uh, like I said, I, I for some of the stuff that's happened and that, that the current EVE administration has changed, I ultimately blame the player base for some of those changes too. So there, there I have a mix of feelings about this. It's been an interesting week, but also an, I honestly, on balance, a little bit more encouraging couple months than I expected. Yeah. Well, I want to, that's a good point. I want to get, Mark, go ahead. I'm sorry. I want to hear what you have to say. I want to, I want to agree. We we can meme all we want about it. And the fact of the matter is we did, uh, you know, we experienced some things the other day that were maybe not what we were hoping to hear. Um, But in the grand scheme, as much as that was disappointing, We have also had moments over the last couple of months now that have felt pretty good. I mean, just in the handful of little things we've been able to get done, um, you know, uh, you know, I can, I can say speaking for my, me and my people specifically that, uh, you know, some of the things we've gotten to, to change, um, even things that are as simple as bug fixes that have been sitting around for years and years, um, that we were able to nail down and some other stuff that's coming up too, you know, those, those are, those are valid changes and I don't want to discredit the effort that's being put in there and the people who are working on those changes and the people who are working on things that people know about too. I mean, I can tell you for a fact that the people who are working on the faction warfare update are working hard and they're going to do, you know, as much as they can do. I, I, absolutely believe that they are putting in as much effort as they can put in to make sure that the product that gets released when it gets released is as a a high level as possible. Now, whether or not that's going to be up to the standard that the community has set for themselves, difficult to say. Um, But I do know that they're working hard. I feel like the issue so much with CCP is not even just so much one of execution, because a lot of times I feel like they execute well on what they have intended to execute on. I feel like the issue is is the strategy prior to that execution and the plan that gets put in place, right? So when you see something that gets put out there, the issue is not because somebody at CCP has failed to do the thing in a quality way most of the time. I feel like more often it's a situation where the the from the bottom up the thing was rotten and somebody you know near the very end tried very hard to make it as decent as possible and they just you know they were working with bad bread right so so like that's a a thing about a lot of eve like obviously we're all here and ran for csm because we care a lot about this game because this this game at its core is is fantastic there's there's not much else like it in modern uh in the modern MMO market or any, any game market really. Um, and a lot of the stuff that comes out, a lot of ideas that have been pitched, uh, are fantastic, but a lot of these fantastic ideas and tremendous concepts and fantabulous, uh, mechanics are held back by some things that could have been easy to avoid that are preventing them from reaching their full potential that are keeping people out of space when people being in space is like the crux of what drives things happening in the game. Um, And I think that it's just like, what's really frustrating is that like most of the problems do seem like they could have been avoided so easily if stuff was started the right way. Mm. Um, And that's what makes it frustrating. Well, I, I agree with that. I think that's part of the problem is hindsight's twenty twenty, and we can look back and see all the different things that 
that weren't issues that we thought were huge issues that now we wish, you know, like I, I, I look to Kaz's point. I mean, here's a perfect example. We heard constantly, constantly from the 2018 to about 2020, 2021, whenever scarcity started hitting about the huge issues with capital and super capital pro proliferation. Mm. Everybody's got Titans. Everybody's mm. got supers. This is the worst thing for the game. It's horrible. It's awful. It's a this. A thousand it's that. Titans on a grid. A thousand Titans on a grid is worse. Oh, it's the Lord. worst thing ever. Oh Lord. And we never really sat and thought about. Well, you know what? Each one of those Titans on a grid is an alt character that is being trained up and kept ready to go, and potentially is a paid customer of the game. And our biggest issue wasn't so much that those things existed, it's that they weren't being used enough and that they weren't dying enough. So, well, let's nerf their EHP to make them die faster, assuming that everybody's going to keep using them at the same rate that they were. That didn't happen. And then, well, if you can't replace them, then maybe people won't use them so they won't be in space and they won't be causing all the problems that people were complaining about them causing. And that was true. But when you mess with the top the ecosystem it trickles down mm. so all the hunters right. who were complaining about getting 15 titans dropped on them whenever they would go on a roam through delve or wherever they didn't like that but they liked it every once in a while when they would catch a rock wall or where they would catch a super out goofing off or doing something stupid or catch a titan in the open and could drop a dread bomb on it and now that stuff is all dried up because that content doesn't exist because nobody is doing that, uh, putting their Titans and stuff in space, except for things right. like today where you have move offs. Yeah. You know. So, so I can't talk I wanna, about that because that's your thing. Well, I want to say, like, and this is not to say that I've been going into this job trying to say to CCP, we should go back to the state of Eve in 2018 or 2019, right? I'm happy to have us in air quotes take some responsibility, right? One of the reasons that that period of the game worked that way is that farms and fields as a mechanic was too strong relative to other mechanics in the game. And I've, I've spent months already talking to Goonswarm about that. That shouldn't be a surprise to anyone hearing this, right? And part of the point of that is that we want to be able to unwind that with CCP. Um, but similarly, we don't feel like the, the response that they had worked out in the way that the game wanted. So I think there's balance to be had here and it's not like I, I'm without hope. Um, but at the same time, uh, a lot of the stuff we've seen, I like, uh, but as I said, we we have not, we still have fear, right? That that some of the things that are wrong will not be fixed or we're not sure that they do have a plan to fix them yet. So we'll see. Angry, yes. you've yes. been rather quiet and that's not like you. Uh, right, because I was not moving my ships. Uh, anyhow. Oh, all right, okay, got <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Got it. So, um, so now that I'm finally done, I can talk about sort of what I thought, think is the key problem, and that is I think we can all agree on is that at this stage, EVE is suffering from an issue of chronic underinvestment from CCP. Uh, all of us can feel – so CCP gave us their org diagram. We're not talking to talk about it, but I think we can talk – we can say that uh, all of us feel there's not enough resources allocated to the core gameplay loop of EVE, which is why things take forever to get fixed. You have a – chain. this is why – you have things like the industry change takes a year because it should not it should not take a year for some, for a patch like that to to be the status quo because in other games things that reduce activity like 90 95% they get hot fixed to within let's just say not a year um and <laughs> yeah that's about right and and i think it speaks to a point that when we're thinking of things to say to CCP, the primary concern we all have is, does this take dev hours? So mm -hmm. we're so when we're brainstorming together, uh, we think, can, can, is this a database change? Is this mechanic hard coded, or does it run off of value in a database? And if it doesn't run off, and if, and if it isn't a database change, we're not we we censor ourselves and don't even talk to CCP about it, uh, uh, except in the most long term of like, hey, in the long, this is a problem because we know they don't have the resources to fix it at the moment. And I think sort of, I don't know if it reflects CCP management, um, but it, it sort of also feels to me like uh, at, least, at least people who are familiar with software development will know what a badly managed Agile team does. And I'm sort of getting those vibes. Hope I didn't trigger anyone. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're right, though. Sir yeah. asked, can, can any of us give him hope for the next six months? And I will try 
I mean, Arcea probably could do a better job than I can because a lot of these changes are coming in her area. Listen, as far as I can tell, the company is on pace to hit their deadlines at the end of the year. They have they have said that they are going to, they've started this narrative arc. We saw a CCP stream this week talking about the narrative. They're working on the Faction Warfare update. They are working on the heraldry changes that they announced. They are working on a lot of that stuff. They seem to be working pretty well towards getting this out by the end of 2022, which is what they said they would do. So I get the feeling probably in the next couple of months, or at least the next month or so, we'll, we'll start to get more information about what's going to be happening down the road. Mm -hmm. And I hope that that will, at, le at the very least, let you guys know that there is stuff happening. Now, Mark's point up earlier about the glacial pace of development is 100% true. And that's one of the things that, that I think is frustrating to a lot of us, because even though we know summer in Iceland means everybody's on vacation. And that's not a, I, I, we make jokes about it all the time. I, I'm fond of, of the of CCP employees get 12, 12 holidays and they last a month, a month long each. My, I've made that joke a bunch of times. People like it. The reality is a lot of them are gone in the summer. They all get back at the end of August, beginning of September, and then they bust their asses the rest of the year. And that's what I think we're going to start seeing. And I think the result of that is going to be that there will be changes coming. We're going to start seeing more of, of that stuff rolling out down the road. But it's hard, especially hard mm. right now when it's summertime. We're looking around. The game does not look like it's in great shape. The PCU is dropping. We're at points lower than we've seen since 2006, I think. If I go back and double check the numbers, it's just not, it's not good. And I think in that time period when we're all freaking out every other day on Reddit, every other day on the forums is, is the game dead? When we don't hear a lot about what's happening, that makes people start to think that, okay, maybe this is not true because everybody, maybe this is true, I should say. Maybe it's not, we shouldn't have hope. Maybe this stuff's not going to happen. But I think the reality is we've seen, I've seen enough from the company in the last month or so that indicates to me that they are full steam ahead on trying to get the stuff that they that they promised or didn't even promise, but at least announced at FanFest out the door uh, by yeah. the end of the year. Do you guys agree with me on that, or am I being? Am I just? Do I have rose colored glasses? No, I mean, I think I think you're probably right. I think it is. It's difficult, right? Because you, you know, the, what they've what they've presented to us all sounds pretty gangster. Um, you know, we. I think there there is reason to be excited about the upcoming, the upcoming faction warfare updates. I would probably uh, <laughs> um, urge people to be cautious in their expectations. Uh, I think if, if, you know, we've seen anything out of the developers, it's that they're certainly a, a, you know, iterate by, you know, trial and consequence kind of group where over time they will get it right. It will just may take a little while, probably not all at once. Um, you know, and that that's great. The problem is from, from my point of view, you know, like to put it this way, when I, before I, um, uh, before we got, we, you know, with the whole election happened and we all kind of got shoved out here. Um, you know, I was campaigning among wormholers and a very wise man once asked me, uh, what would you do if you get elected and then you get back, you know, behind the curtain and somebody at CCP says, hey, awesome. Uh, glad you're here. Welcome to the squad. Uh, just so you know, we're not going to do anything for wormholes for two years. So uh, good luck, you know. And that's, I feel like that that is kind of where we're at on some things. You know, they, they clearly have a plan in place of what they are intending to work on. Um, you know, they, uh, they certainly, you know, seem like they can dedicate effort to things they care about. Um, you know, then the question becomes, how do you convince CCP that some things are worth caring about? Um, and I, I do feel that, you know, we're, we're in a position where most of the stuff that we do on a day-to-day -day basis is trying not to convince CCP how to fix the game, but convince CCP one, that the game needs to be fixed and two, that the game needs to be fixed quickly. Uh, and if we can accomplish those things, then hell yeah, brother, we're going to get it done because they, they absolutely will dedicate resources to things that they give a shit about. Uh, it's just a, it's just a, a hundred percent issue of whether or not, 
um, you know, they, they will listen to it or they'll, they'll, they'll they will care. Um, and that's the hardest part of this job, I think, is finding. And and that's not to say that there aren't people who do. I mean, I'll tell you right now, there are plenty of devs out there who are, who, who absolutely give a shit. And they, you know, you they won't see it outright because they don't want to, you know, they're you know, this is their job. They don't they're getting paid, right? And they don't want to blah, 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 blah. But you definitely get the impression from them that they are sitting around here looking at each other with the same kind of looks that we're giving each other right now and saying, like, bro bro what are we gonna do like this it's not looking great so yeah that's kind of where i'm at about it so so rob o'midland said so waiting till the end of the year for content that maybe seven percent of the player base gives a shit about faction warfare is something a lot of player base doesn't want because it doesn't change the normal day-to-day -day gameplay that most e players engage in now here's the thing to that statement and arcia probably wants to jump through the screen and strangle you but I, what i would say is the way that we have approached this, the way that the company has explained to us that they are approaching this is that while this is a quote unquote faction warfare update, they're making a lot of fundamental updates to mechanics in the game. They're adding, they're going to be adding new ships, as we saw on the stream with Aurora, a bunch of other things like that, that are going to have an impact outside of faction warfare. Yes, maybe the content like the, the, the PVE stuff. And 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 the and the obvious narrative stuff is going to be faction warfare things. And for those of us in Nullsec who make our own stories, we could probably care less, couldn't care less about about whether they do narrative stuff or that. But the reality is, if they make a good system, in my opinion, the way that I saw it explained, if they make a good system for faction warfare that lets people lip solve, control things, move stuff around that makes it exciting, that creates conflict points and things like that. There is nothing stopping them from taking those formulas that work for faction warfare and expanding that into NullSec. Mm -mm. And if you look at, for example, we've been bitching and moaning about the soft system. And granted, you know, there's never been a soft system in this game that people haven't complained about until the <laughs> next one came around. And then we all love the old one. But at the end of the day, if, if they can come up with a system that's fun and cool and good that works for faction warfare, there's no reason why that could not be a template for changes to NullSec. In addition, all the new ships, all the different things that they're going to be providing uh, in terms of making those ships, uh, whatever PVE opportunities are out there, it's not that we can't take advantage of it. And that's one of the other reasons why we've been pushing so hard on the CSM to get the company to recognize that they need to roll out this allegiance system that they've been talking about since FanFest, where anybody could participate in faction warfare without having to leave their corporation. Mm. That way, it that becomes something that everybody cares about. Arcia, talk about so, that. So, uh, you mentioned the allegiance system that was mentioned at FanFest. And, like, that is really one of the biggest cruxes of uh, why these faction warfare changes are important. Right now, faction warfare, and since, since its inception, faction warfare has been a uh, the base system is good. The problem with it is that it is very inaccessible to a lot of players, people with one account, people who have a group of friends that they like to play with, people who want to go to Jita, right? Um, all these people ha face struggles going into Faction Warfare. Two of the militias get attacked by cops in Jita, which with the PCU being so low is really the only place you can shop in bulk. Like as much as I like to meme shop in heck and support your local freedom fighters, you're paying, you, you can't buy two frigates sometimes in heck, right? Pretty much. Um, and Amar and Dodixie are no different. I mean, they're, they're nice. It's, it's just, it's not as easy to get stuff there. And if you want to find everything, faction, you can only go to one place. Before faction warfare, a lot of low sec content was driven by things like static DED plexes. And you saw like the molden heath loop getting a lot of activity after faction warfare. A lot of low sec content, even for non faction warfare people, was driven by the activity in the faction warfare war zone. Um, and as time has gone by and that area has been neglected, uh, barely changed since it was was uh, introduced a decade ago, a decade plus, more than a decade, almost a decade and a half at this point. Um, low sec has lost a lot of a lot of players, a lot of. Uh, it, it's deader than it than it's ever been, um, as is pretty much every area in the game. Um, and I think this uh, 
these updates that do look very good uh, that CCP announced at FanFest. Uh, Aurora announced Aurora is like the best person in the company, by the way. She is fantastic. Um, I think they look very good. And I think the crux is, as you said, the Allegiant system to make it accessible. People, I think more people would uh, interact with it if they didn't have to leave their friends in the online game, right? Who wants to leave leave their friends? People will literally do other stuff over leaving their friends. Now, what if, well, hang on a second. What if their friends suck? Just asking you. <laughs> now yeah. you're sounding like an Eve player. Just ask us. Just ask you. Your friends suck. Get new friends. Just, Come just join ask that question real quick. Not, not asking for anyone um, specific. I'm just. I like you, my friends who suck. All right. Like. You make new friends okay. and steal all of your old friends stuff. Right? There you that's go. That's how, you that's how you do it in Eve. So, I mean, all right, so, so BP asked, uh, is there any significant chance of an internal CCP org shakeup to hopefully correct the dev resource allocation issues? I don't see it. Not anytime soon. I mean, granted, the company reorganizes itself every six months anyway. So it's not like there isn't, there aren't constant reorganizations going on. The yeah. problem is the people making the decisions are the same, and I don't think there any of them are going anywhere. So... You know, we have to we have to work with the folks that are in charge and we have to be able to convince them when things are are important to us that this needs to get done. And that help, and it helps when the CSM can be united. And I think I want to say this. Uh, thank you to to Mark and NRC and, and Kaz and, and Angry and then the rest of the CSM, because I, I this is my fourth CSM. And I feel like it has not since CSM 13 have I felt like all of the members been on the same page when it comes to what are the most important things going on? What's Hell the biggest yeah. issue right now? Yeah, and that's right. Gang, gang, bitch. We exactly. out here. There you go. Like, I mean, the number one thing, and, and we, we have said this, and I, it's funny. I hate that I that we have to uh, uh, like say that this is something the CSM all agrees about, but this is, I, I don't think we could have gotten an agreement on, on this, you know, last year. We couldn't have. It just, there was not, an ability to reach any kind of consensus on the CSM, there is now. And I think the number one thing that everybody on the CSM right now is worried about, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, number one thing is how many people Player are count. in space? Yep. And every time we talk to CCP, we reference the PCU, we reference our concerns about how many people are playing. We ask them, are you seeing the numbers? How are the numbers looking? What are they <laughs> looking like? Are you guys worried? I mean, that literally comes up in almost every meeting. Now we can't tell you what the answers are, but I want you at least to know that we are asking the question and it is front of mind for us every day because we think that's the biggest issue confronting the game right now as opposed to anything else. Yeah. And I'd like to say that's nice to have consensus because, damn, it's been a long time since I felt like we had consensus and on anything. The, yeah. the different areas of space have a lot of differences, but the one thing that is the same in low and null and wormholes and even high sec is that people in space is what makes things happen. Mm. Right. Like that is the one thing that unites every area of space. We have different opinions about maybe the specifics of how to address it, but everybody wants more people in space. Right. Like, is there anybody in the game who doesn't? Right. Like, right. Yeah. I, yeah. No, I mean, and, and I'll, 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 I'll tell you God's honest truth here, boys and girl. Mm. We are particularly fortunate. I think right now that we actually have a, almost i think the perfect combination of people to address these concerns if ccp would just listen to us just listen listen to the words we have to say we have two of the premier numbers guys in the game currently right now on the csm we've got a, a slew of some of the, the the best fcs in the game we have one of the 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 most the most the 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 most insightful faction warfare players who has ever come out of that system that, that system ever we have me we have fountain frank like just listen ccp please god listen hey hang on listen guys okay i'm speaking to you directly now ccp watch me listen to me okay just listen friends Look, we're just we're not trying to make life worse for you. Like, you know, we're just trying to make things better for everybody. You know, we do a little bit, you do a little bit, you make some money where everybody's happy. You know, you think you're gonna be hey, listen, I'm gonna tell you guys, listen, you think you're gonna be making more money with eleven thousand people playing or forty thousand people playing. But just think just think about that for a second. Okay, just think about it. Use your brain, get out your calculators, the old abacus, slide those little bad boys around. And you tell me what you think is gonna make you some more money, okay. People more buying your merch, people but, but, but buying Plex. I know Plex sales are down because Plex is expensive as shit right now, boys. So fucking figure it out. 
Mm-hmm. Let's go. Come on. We can't <laughs> wait. No, and I, I yeah. mean, that's the bottom line. Like, this is the thing that's frustrating. And we always try to explain that. And I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs. Brisk. I, heard, I just used the F word. Um, oh, the no. F word in our house is not the usual F word. <laughs> it is frustrating. I'm not allowed uh. to say the F word. Uh, but what I find to be the biggest issue that I have to deal with when I try to talk to everybody is trying to convince folks that we're all on the same team. That, yes, I am giving you a hard time and I am telling you what you don't want to hear. And I'm asking the questions that are uncomfortable. But the reality is I want the company to succeed because if the company succeeds, the game succeeds. Mm. And if the game succeeds, then I can keep playing with my friends. So we all have we all have some skin in the game here. So when we say things like maybe you shouldn't have increased the, the, the prices by five bucks in the middle of. Everybody, everything else going up five bucks. I understand why you did it, but maybe listen to us. You know, when we say everything you guys have done for the last two years on the economy has not worked, mm. I'm not being critical and I'm not like saying, you know, I told you so because I tell you, Merck and I were talking about, Merck, Merck and Shen and I were talking about this the other day. The last couple of months seeing the numbers drop like this is the absolute worst I told you so I've ever been able to. To say I don't want to say it because I didn't want it to happen. Mm. Right. We've been but telling them that we're motivated by fear, right? And, and yeah. that that is the truth. It was in my campaign post, as a matter yeah. of fact, right? So I mean, I can try and good cop. I think there's two parts hopium here. Like we've been saying, a lot of the stuff we've seen that that we believe will be coming, uh, not necessarily, and I don't want to give a timeline on any of that, but but both their immediate and sort of medium term plans really looks good, right? Even for the stuff that is not directly being addressed with faction war, I would not expect this release to just be faction war only. Uh, You're gonna see stuff. And second, it's not like they have not, it's not like they've been totally unreceptive. Of course, like Bruce says, Mm -hmm. we're telling them uh, what we think are the problems and we've had a number of good meetings and gotten feedback and we'll continue to pressure them to get whatever we can. And again, no comment on what that might be into whatever releases are coming next. Right. But the, the sort of the caveat to both of those is what's going on with the game now is big. Right. And it's not just people say economy. Right. But it's not only economy. It's the whole ecosystem and the way everything is out of whack with capital still so difficult to be built and other parts of the game overpowered relative to them. Right. All these missing accounts are are people who are missing connected to that, who either they're not able to farm because farming is not worth it or their capitals are not worth it to be logged in or they can't build new ones or they can't be replaced. All of those feed into this. Right. And so that's what I mean when I say we're still worried. We are going to encourage them to do everything we can to get as many of these pieces fixed as we can. Uh, but it's not as simple necessarily as just tweaking some numbers. And so I don't want to overstate the hope or the length of time. Uh, I don't necessarily know or I don't have enough knowledge to promise you that if we say X, Y, Z, and then they do that, is it automatically going to fix a PCU? We don't necessarily know that for sure either. So we're, we're going to do our best. Uh, and and I hope that this stuff goes well. We're going to try and tell them everything we can to make sure that they don't uh, step in it relative to the, what the player base is expecting and what, what everyone wants, uh, and that's basically where we're at. I mean, that's the, that's the thing. Even if they were to reverse everything they did over the last two years, get rid of the ESSs, get rid of the bounty risk modifier, get rid of all the dynamic bounty stuff, fix all the uh, the stuff with, uh, with minerals and change everything back the way it was, people still are not going to come back to the game until – they hear or at least they see that people are happy with it or that things Mm -hmm. are fun again or that it's they hear from their friends that are still playing hey yeah you guys should come back there's a reason to come back and just going back to the way it was is not going to be a reason enough to come back for a lot of people they're going to need something else and that's why i feel like we're kind of in this tough situation where normally they can the company can choose between do we want to do a big content like Jesus feature update that adds something brand new to the game to get people to come in? Or do we spend all of our time trying to fix the stuff that's broken that will keep people from leaving and they have to pick between the two? But right now, they don't have a choice. They've got to do both at the same time because both of them are necessary. They can't afford to lose people, but they absolutely have to bring new people in. They spend a lot of time on things that are bringing new people in, and it seems like they're doing a pretty good job of getting new people in the game. They're not all staying that long, but at least they're getting them in and getting them to get a taste of it. 
but the veterans are the issue. I mean, I've seen more people that I'm friends with that have been hardcore about this game for a long time walking away, more of them walking away in the last six months or so than even at the height of scarcity, mm. which granted was happening in the middle of the pandemic and the war, the big war, the last big war. So a lot of people had a reason to log in. They don't have that anymore. So I think that this, that to me is the big issue. And unfortunately it's not something that they can, they can fix in an hour. Yeah. So this is actually, I, I'm glad you brought this up because I think this is important. In fact, I'm going to take off the pit vipers for a second. There you go. So I can, so I can speak directly. He wants to look in your eyes to the player base because this is important. Uh, and I'm and, I, and I'm I'm going to try and not meme for a second because this is this is a hard thing to do and I know the Reddit's going to fucking flame me for this but whatever. Listen, a lot of things are probably going to change. Hopefully, if we if we if we can get things right, things are going to change. Okay, either the faction warfare update is going to make things happen or any of the other stuff they're working on is going to happen and the game will change incrementally over time. Hopefully, sooner, maybe later, we'll see. However, as a player base, we have to take a certain amount of responsibility for manufacturing the kind of interest that will bring people back to the game, right? I, right now, have told people who have played the game before with me that I can't recommend coming back to the game in the state that it's in right now, okay? And they always ask, well, when, when should we come back? And I always tell them, I'll let you know, right? And I think that's important that we as players seriously consider the idea that when the game gets to a place where we feel like it's fun, if it gets to the place that we feel like it's fun again, we need to let people know about it. Okay. If it ever gets to that point, fuck it. Okay. It is what it is. You know, we had a good run. It's gotta be what's going to be right. But at, at a certain point, if you ever find yourself enjoying Eve again, for whatever reason, maybe join a different group, maybe the game changed in a way that is that, you know, your, your play style has been brought back uh, or you found a new play style. You should tell people about it because, you know, as much as we manufacture the, the content of this game, all those cool stories that CCP likes to market on our behalf. We also, I think have to take a certain amount of responsibility for marketing the game too, because CCP's marketing is eh, Word of mouth is much better. And I can say right now that I joined the game. I started playing the game in 2006 because of, you know, a recommendation from a friend and somebody else might now today join the game because I recommended it. So if you get to that point and you feel that way, tell somebody about it. And if not, fucking let it ride, baby. Who gives a fuck? It's the end of days. <laughs> what are you going to do? I, mean, I, I just want to know where to put the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the, the Chinese server is having its end and creek so hell yeah because they, they think they might be getting a new server and everything they work for is going away well, i mean look if we look like, if, if there's no other reason to stick around we should do it just so that you can be the last one here when they turn the lights off you know what i mean <laughs> fucking yeah who knows i think uh i guess, I guess I'll, I'll say you that for our terms we always have to find a definition of success sometimes it's standing on a carrier giving a speech about mm -hmm. mission accomplished in front of a flag Sometimes it's declaring victory and advancing in a different direction. I think for me personally, I would consider my term of success if I can get just get CCP to understand that for a subscription-based company, leading indicators are more important than lagging indicators. And at least from my from what it will looks like to me, CCP's metrics they use for things is primarily lagging indicators. When you when with a subscription, people are people make the decision to subscribe to unsubscribe. A long time before they actually do. That's for your gym, for games, for and for Netflix, as they're finding out much to their detriment. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, no joke. I think mean, if they can just look at Netflix and see what happened there, maybe they will change their mind about what metrics they care about. Because at least what I think is they're they're overly focused on metrics that aren't important. Maybe maybe because they they the guy doing the numbers to order to maybe he just isn't familiar with how the how what the implications of the metrics are but uh for they're they're a very data-driven company but sometimes you but the perpetual throw of that is garbage mm. data and garbage business decisions out and that's what happens at, at least i think that's that's been happening quite a bit at ccp since i don't know probably going back a decade i will say this again and i gave him a shout out last show i'll give him a shout out again ccp estimate Keep up the good work. 
<laughs> it's nice to have somebody that that angry can talk to that's not me or Kaz or Mark or Arcia, because he talks in a completely different language than us most of the time. But estimate gets it, so that's good. They they can chat with each other. It's nice. All right, we are about out of time for this show. We're going to go around and get last thoughts from everybody, and then we're going to get the hell out of here. Kaz, anything we'd like to leave as a parting shot on uh, the show today? I don't know about shots. Uh, I Listen, I know that the people long for a great EVE Online. They, you know, they're hungry for it, uh, and we're still doing our best to give you all one. Uh, I, you know, I've had some encouraging and some discouraging experiences so far. It's been interesting. Uh, I, I am not without hope yet. I am looking forward uh, to the next few months, as a matter of fact, and we will see what happens. All right. Arcia. So I still enjoy EVE Online. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't care about it. I wouldn't have ran for CSM. I think it is one of the most interesting and unique games on the market, and I think it has one of the most uh, rich lore IPs on the market. I have to plug that because I'm I'm also the role play candidate, <laughs> right? <laughs> but um, when uh, we're being critical of the game, I think it's important to stress that it's because we care about it, and it's not to to dunk on the nerds at CCP. Get re I mean. We care about the game. They care about the game, and we want. We, we should all want it to succeed and uh, do better than it than it has been. And I think everybody does. So, um, yeah, lis listen to us. Bye. <laughs> there you go. Angry. Oh, I thought I thought I already said mine, but uh, if I want you want a second one, you uh, can get a second one and go. You'll get a second. One. I'll take all I can get. Um is so I, i'm really grumpy today because uh the the incident on thursday was actually i asked a question i got dismissed so still Did you say that you're angry i hey uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh so it's th that's still a, a bummer two two days later but um it really it really just has the future of the game comes down to company leadership realizing that they have an issue and allocating more resources to because ultimately always everything just comes down to resources. Um, and, and we all, a game doesn't get into this day unless it's chronically underfunded. Mm. Yep. Mark. Look, I realistically, I had, if you would have asked me when I started playing this game a, a decade and a half ago, if I'd ever be in this position right now, I would have told you, why are you talking to me? I'm 13 years old. Leave me alone. Um, but realistically, you know, uh, the way I see it, you know, we just, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. You know, we're going, we're going to try and keep this, this show on the road. Uh, maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't, uh, sure. Hope it does. Um, you know, if it doesn't, that would fucking suck, but, uh, I can, I can tell you right now that I have full belief in everybody who's on the CSM right now. That everybody is working hard. Everybody's trying their ding ding dog best to try and make the make this thing as good as possible. And uh, you know, I, I I have confidence in the people who we're working with. Um, so I I feel I feel good about our group. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, in the next couple months. And also shout out to Asher. Thinking about you today, buddy. Hope everything's okay. Yep. Oh. Like well, I, I, actually about Asher one, today. I actually do have one last note. Um, Go ahead. Despite the fact they're not here, I'm I'm going back. I, so one of the things I did uh, when I was going back to the notes from previous ones and seeing like who vanished after the first month or who vanished after the, the first two months, and I can at least tell, since it's not NDA data, that no one from this group, even if they're not here, has actually vanished and not. And Let's not stop fucking go! <laughs> like, like, CSM the seventeen. This, like the first time this hasn't happened. Like, I don't know, probably a decade. Because That's what always, I'm talking about. There's always one or two guys that fuck off immediately after getting People elected. People are still here. It's good. You got to end right. on a positive note. Great. That's what I'm talking right. about, dude. So on a, on a, a, a wrapping up the show, because we're a little bit over time, but hey, you know what? We always give you more content than less for the same amount of money. Zero <laughs> has been since the beginning of time. Uh, wanted to do two things. First of all, one, I want to shout out to our dear friend Asher Elias, the Imperium Alliance executor. Uh, had a family tragedy last week. His father passed away. Uh, we're all thinking about you, Asher. We're all with you. We we want you to know that you are loved and we care about you and we are 
Uh, hoping to see and hear from you soon and that take as much time as you need to get out there and get your stuff worked out because we're all, we'll all be here waiting for you when you get back, brother. And then the second thing is, programming note, this week coming up is Labor Day weekend in the United States. I am a union man, and that means I take my Labor Day very seriously, and I will be enjoying a four-day weekend, so no Meta Show next week. We'll be back the week after. We have a couple of uh, good shows planned in the future. We're going to have a good good debate with the small gang guys coming up soon. That'll be on the show. We're also thinking about doing a very special edition of the Meta Show that might remind people of what it was like a couple of years ago. And uh, in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed today's CSM update. We are at the three-month mark. We will try to have all of these guys back way before the six-month mark. And I think Mark has done a great job, at least, of convincing my wife that she has a new person to fanboy over because she's a big fan of Mark Resurrectus now. I love and she your likes wife. Garcia too. So, Mrs. Brisk, yeah, you have this. You guys have the Mrs. Brisk mark of approval uh, for the show. So, everybody, thank you all. This has been the Meta Show for August the twenty seventh, twenty twenty two. I am Brisk Rubal, joined alongside Casimir, Angry Mustache, Mark Resurrectus, and Arcia Elkin from CSM seventeen. Thanks for watching, and you stay classy, New Eden. Mm.